All right, Rebecca, it's all yours. Wendy, thank you for inviting me today. And I got to tell you that just being a part of this virtual um, moment in church has, oh my gosh, I am, I feel so grateful to be singing with all of you and seeing and hearing little children's voices and getting to have the wisdom of that gorgeous story and Amanda's song and the gorgeous hymns. So thanks for, for including me. Um, I'm going to take just a second to share my screen. All right. Are you seeing my screen? Yes. There we go. Yes, we see you. Okay, great. And if I, if I get a wobbly internet connection, I'll turn my video off. But until then, we will, I'll just, you should be able to see me up in the corner. So as Wendy was mentioning, I am teaching a bunch of relationship classes. The, the big project I'm working on is about helping people cultivate habits for their marriage, because that is a primary relationship that we're trying to well, that is a basis for a lot of the way we communicate in the world. So that's my big um, project. And I have this project about communication. So it grows out of the class that I'm teaching, but they're communication skills that apply to anything. So Wendy and I thought it would be appropriate to just be thinking about how do we best communicate and what are some skills for that? I'm going to talk about three things today, overcoming fear getting clear and being able to ask cleanly. And I'm going to tell a story. And as I tell my story about a relationship who's struggling with some communication, I want you to picture a relationship in your life. It might be with your kids or your parents or your coworkers, any kind of place where you might be struggling just a little bit with communication. And that will allow this to go a little bit deeper for you. So my story is about Quinn and Skylar and Quinn and Skylar love each other. And Quinn has this fantasy that if they buy a house together, all the intimacy that Quinn dreams of will be unlocked and they'll have the togetherness that Quinn is desiring. Now, the problem is that Skylar is in the dark about this magic key and Skylar doesn't know about the magic key. When Quinn is imagining what the magic key will do, Quinn has this fantasy, like we all have fantasies about how our, how our communication or our, our intimacy with the people in our lives will open up things that we want. Quinn is imagining at holiday time when it's time to send that card to all our friends, Quinn and Skylar's name will be up in the corner of that envelope and all will be right because the world will know about Quinn's love. Now, here's the problem is we also all have a lizard inside our brain that's trying to protect us from whatever might endanger us. Sometimes that's the saber-toothed tiger, right? Our ancestors were, had a lizard brain to protect us from danger, mortal danger, but that brain didn't go away. And now that lizard is often protecting us from getting our feelings hurt and it stops communication. So I want to talk about what Quinn is afraid of how much this envelope with the two names will impact the, the relationship growth with Quinn. So that inner lizard is coming over to swallow up that envelope so Quinn can't talk about it. So when Quinn does manage to get Quinn's mouth open, Quinn says, housing prices are dropping around here. <laughs> that is nothing like the envelope, but that's that lizard who protects us when we're afraid and has us say something that feels a little safer than our deep dream. As I mentioned, Skylar's in the dark about this dream, and Skylar also wants to protect this relationship. And so when Skylar hears 
Quinn say, housing prices are dropping around here. What Quinn, what Skylar actually hears is the economy is crashing and Quinn is afraid. Skylar loves Quinn. And so Skylar wants to reassure Quinn and says, oh, your job is safe and secure. You don't need to worry. Now, Quinn, who remember was wanting the envelope of shared attachment when Quinn said housing prices are dropping. And now Skylar has just talked about how val you know the job is not in trouble. Quinn hears you're only important when you earn money. And <laughs> that is not what Quinn wanted in terms of building this relationship. So not only was Quinn not able to overcome fear, the fear is winning because Quinn lacks the clarity to say exactly what Quinn wants and makes this fuzzy ask of housing prices are dropping around here. In order to communicate effectively and be able to share that vulnerable part of ourselves, we first have to address the fear that is trying to say, this is what you don't want. And it protects us often by making words not be able to come out of our mouth. So when, when you know that fear is helping you know what you don't want, Quinn doesn't want a blank envelope, right? Quinn doesn't want to feel alone. So the lizard saying, don't talk about the envelope. It's that's letting fear win, right? And 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 not talking about the envelope, not talking about what Quinn doesn't want gives in to the fear. So take a moment and think about what fear might be stopping you. What are you afraid to say out loud? Because it's so much that you don't want it that you can't even acknowledge it. When we can overcome fear, it's really about gentleness, right? Welcoming that fear in and making friends with the fear and waving it. Oh, I see. You're trying to tell me what I don't want. And that gentleness allows Quinn to get a hold of, okay, I don't want to be lonely. And when we're afraid, as Quinn did, Quinn was like pushing that fear away. But if we can be gentle with our fear, make friends with it and say, you know what? I'm afraid of that blank envelope that shouts to the world that I'm alone. And that's what I don't want. That's scary. And that's why fear is trying to protect us. When we can remember that fear is trying to protect us, we can overcome fear from stopping us in communication by making friends. Okay, so that's number one, overcome fear. Well, let's talk about getting clear by first looking at what happened with Quinn. Quinn is talking and talking, but not aligned with what Quinn feels deeply. And so Quinn gets really muddled. Like there's all these thoughts in Quinn's mind, you know, the blank envelope that Quinn doesn't want and the dream of the, of the envelope Quinn does want. And meanwhile, the lizard is, that lizard brain is busy spinning all these stories so that what comes out of Quinn's mouth has nothing to do with what Quinn wants. And it's protective. Well, let's talk about money because that we can kind of put that in a box. When you are muddled, when I am muddled, and when we speak, we keep people in the dark about who we are and what we want out of the relationship. So in order to get that clarity, we, for, we, after we've overcome fear, we need to ask ourselves, what do I want? Now I've identified what I don't want. I need to identify what I do want. And so Quinn needs to own this dream of, I, I, it's a silly thing, but I just want that feeling of our names on the envelope together. That's what makes me feel like I belong somewhere. 
what do you want in the relationship that you are meditating on this morning? When you get clear and are able to clear away those muddled edges that fear causes, what is it that you want? So we use overcome fear to identify what we don't want. And we identify what we do want to get clarity. And then comes that ask cleanly. Quinn was not able to ask cleanly because fear was ruling the roost. Everything got muddled. And what comes out is this fuzzy ask. And inevitably, when we don't have a clean ask, it gets muddled. That's why Quinn said housing prices are dropping, right? Because Quinn is being ruled by fear and lacks clarity. And so talks about something completely different, but it doesn't change what is in Quinn's heart or head. Meanwhile, <laughs> Skylar's completely in the dark. Skylar has absolutely no idea about this envelope with the names because Quinn hasn't mentioned it. Skylar thinks this is about money. And Skylar is trying to listen like the rabbit in today's story. Skylar's trying to listen. And what Quinn is talking about is money. Now, maybe after reading today's story, Skylar could listen a little longer. And that always helps in communication. But today I'm talking about how we can own the words we say and be able to give that message to the person with whom we're communicating. So when Skylar is listening to this fear that Skylar can hear Quinn has, the words that come out is, your job is safe and secure, and Skylar's trying to reassure Quinn, but it doesn't work. And now Quinn has, with, with emotion, Quinn has put their heart out, right? thinking they asked about the key and the shared envelope. And so Quinn's envelope goes blank and fear really takes over for Quinn. And there's this schism between Quinn and Skylar because what happens when fear is ruling our communication is we go to that reptilian place of fight, flight, or freeze. When we fight with a person and get defensive, right, Skylar could have said, could have argued and fought with Quinn saying, you're wrong. Housing prices are not dropping. Well, that wouldn't have helped either, right? Or Skylar could have gotten silent and just said nothing because Skylar could sense Quinn was afraid or, or something was going on and could have frozen. Or Skylar could have run away. All of those reactions that are motivated by fear just lead to a brick wall when it comes to communication and it's impenetrable. We can't connect when we're building that huge wall between us. So we want to ask cleanly and a clean ask is composed of being able to overcome fear and identify what I don't want being able to get clear and identify what I do want and putting those together to ask out loud so that Quinn could say, I don't want to live without you. I want to tell the whole world that I love you. Now, that's really vulnerable, right? And it's scary to communicate like that. And so I want to tell you a quick story about what this looked like with my parents. My dad died this summer, but for the past couple of years, I've been going to their house and he was 90 when he died and his health had been failing for a year, several years. And as when they lived over on the front range and so I would go over and while I was there, I wanted to make a contribution. I wanted to look around their house and see what things were causing them struggle and how could I contribute. One of the things that was so magical for me about the way the service has gone this morning is how much just rushing feel of community there is in your congregation. And you all want to be able to contribute. I forget the words that you used, Wendy, um, but it was in the opening invocation about whatever you contribute, whether it treasure, time, or I can't remember the other one, 
we all have a need to contribute. And when I was with my parents, I wanted to do things for them. And I saw their recycling building up and their recycle needed to go quite a ways up, up a hill to where their garage was up the hill. So I would try to do that. And what my parents were feeling was, I don't want to be a burden. That's their fear. I don't want you to have to do jobs when you come over to visit. I don't want to be a burden, right? So they're communicating, don't take the recycling. Now they didn't say, I don't want to be a burden. All they said was, don't take the recycling. When we could get clear, what is it that my parents did want? And what did I want? I wanted intimacy with them. I wanted to make a contribution. They wanted intimacy with me too, but they were embarrassed that they couldn't do the things that they used to be able to do. This is the heart of communication is it's so vulnerable and and clear communication is going to invite that terrifying thing that our lizard's trying to protect us from. Recognizing that vulnerability piece allows my parents and I to communicate and, and ask cleanly. I, they were embarrassed to ask for help. But when I said, and maybe I'm going to give myself some points for being the rabbit that just listened a little bit longer I could hear it wasn't they didn't want me to take the recycling. They didn't want to need to ask me. And so when we could talk about that and talk about how vulnerable it feels to get older and change and not be able to do the jobs that you once did, they could let in the fact that I was there because I wanted to be with them. And they could say, okay, could you take out the recycling? Because after I had gone time after time and we'd have this recycling conversation, it seems silly, but isn't that how communication goes is it takes time of going back and forth and talking about how, what it is about the fear and what it is I don't want so that we can get to that place where Quinn was able to say, Skylar, I'm afraid that you don't want to share a life with me. Or my parents could say, I'm afraid that you'll think I'm worthless because I can't get my recycling up the hill. Then we can get clear and identify what we do want. And Quinn can say, what I do want, Skylar, is I want the happiness of that silly little thing like holiday cards I want our name to be together up in the corner so the world knows that I love you. And then be able to put it together in a clean ask. I don't want to feel like a burden, but I do want to feel close to you. So I'm going to ask if you'll take out the recycling. In order to communicate clearly, fear is a big part of the equation. And so First, we need to overcome that fear by gently understanding what the fear is. When we can gently understand our fear, it's no longer throwing words out of our mouth that we don't mean to say, and it allows us to get clear about what we do want. And then comes that moment when we invite the vulnerability of intimacy for what we want. I hope that as you think about the relationship that you're contemplating, you can identify what is it that's got me afraid? And because of my fear, how am I muddled? How can I overcome that fear, get clear, and ask cleanly for what I want in this relationship? Thanks for letting me be with you today. I'm very honored to be a part of your congregation. Thank you, Rebecca. If, if you wanna go ahead and stop your screen share now. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to invite whoever wants to 
to unmute themselves. And the way that we do this here, um, if you have something that you'd like to say or ask Rebecca a question or just have a thought, go ahead and unmute yourself and I will invite you to speak. And if you're here in the sanctuary, um, I will just raise your hand and I'll invite you to say something if, if you wanna say something. So um, would anybody like to, to respond to what Rebecca said today? I know I have kind of a silly story that when uh, Cameron, my husband and I were dating, he's very literal. And I called him and I was like, I'm in the mood for pizza. Meaning Rebecca, that um, I don't have anything to do tonight and it would sure be fun to spend time with you. <laughs> and wouldn't that be fun for us to go get pizza together? Like to me, that was like really obvious. And he responded, he was like, well, go get some pizza. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> so, but I went through your steps pretty fast. I was like, okay, that didn't work. So then I said, I would like to go get some pizza with you. And he said, oh, okay, that sounds fun. <laughs> so nice job. You know, it, it, it happens all the time. Um, Monty and Elizabeth, did you want to say something? Well, I was just thinking, you know, what struck me the most is 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 just being vulner, vulnerable enough to let the fear in and that that seems to me to be the the biggest step in in really understanding ourselves you know in the first place and 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 what we want and how hard it is to to really let the fear in and acknowledge it and then for me that's that's just that that's the hardest part to do, I think. Monty, I couldn't agree with you more. That that is the key, right? Is being able to to make friends with our fear. It's really hard. Thanks for telling us that though, because we all sometimes feel alone that we're the only person who feels fear. And we think everybody else isn't feeling fear. And so when you say it out loud, it helps me to go. Monty feels fear too. I'm not the only one. Uh, Mary, go ahead. Hi, I just wanted to thank Rebecca for offering uh, the, the visual chart and for distilling things down to a, a level that we can kind of grab hold of and reminding us of that reptilian part. Thanks. It's good to see you, Mary. Thanks for, I'm glad you enjoyed the slides. I had fun making them. All right, hold on. We have a, we have a person in the sanctuary that is raising their hand. So I'm gonna grab the microphone for them. Okay, I'm going to talk into it. Um, for me, it's about noticing uh, my. You, you don't really have to try to make changes in your life. All you have to do is notice what's happening. Um, You, I get so, I guess my, my internal chatter, my internal voice is just constantly all day long chattering away. And I don't notice the expression on someone's face or their body language when they're, when they're talking to me. I don't notice what's happening because I'm all tied up wrapped up in my own thoughts. So if you can quiet your inner chatter somehow, meditation or whatever does it for you, then, then you begin to notice what's going on around you. You notice someone's 
expression on their face, expression of disappointment or anger. Otherwise, you miss it and um, make mistakes. That's all I want to say. Thank you. And I it's um, in the last year and a half, it's been a lot harder uh, when everybody has masks on. Yeah. Uh, Lance, come on. Why don't you come up here and you can stand in front of my computer so people can see you. While Lance is coming up, I just want to reiterate that what you talked about, about noticing, I think that is so powerful when it comes to taming fears because fear is what gets us spinning and it's all about focusing on what I won't get. But when we can notice both ourselves and the world around us, that spinning voice of fear calms. So man, you are so right on with noticing the reality going on around us and the reality inside that slows the fear and helps us. Lance. Um, what I think is terribly important is to list all your possible alternatives that you could do and clarify them. Uh, and that way um, you can compare what's the probability that uh, your fear will go down and you will be able to achieve or get what you want or need. So rather than have one alternative and you, it's either yes or no, several comparing each other gives you more information and possibly a better outcome. Thanks. So Lance, part of it for you is getting, getting clarity involves making sure you can see all the different choices. That's what allows you to get clear. Right. And not to rush that either, because sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and, oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Okay. So it's good to get your alternatives, um, give them enough time to work against each other or together, um, and then make decisions about what's your best possibility to have a good outcome. Thank you. Thanks, Lance. All right. Well, it looks like it is about that time to uh, listen to our, our closing hymn. But Rebecca, uh, thank you so much. And if people want to get in touch with you um, for maybe some life coaching or just to get some more information about your relationship classes, how can they get in touch with you? Well, you can always email me and I can get you in touch with Rebecca. But I think um, do you have a website or something? I do. My website is alteredspaces.com, but it's spelled alter like the kind of alter you're at this morning, A-L-T-A-R-E-D spaces.com. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Rebecca. And uh, we are going to close out now with one of my favorites, uh, Something Told the Wild Geese by our very own UUCGV Choir.
We extinguish this flame, but not the warmth of truth, the light of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again.